and up in the fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel. And chapter from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew the Evangelist Apostle and your disciple, may his blessings be with us And so we are teaching them in the Prophet and King, may his blessing be with us all men, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. He who comes in the name of the Lord, O Lord God, and saving the King of our soul, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, glory be to you. in which most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Were to you, Chorazin, were to you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it would be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you, and you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Ooh. Glory be to God forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God in you. Following to the, the gospel reading yesterday, and the Lord who was talking about um, that there no prophet has honor in his own country and amongst his own people. Um, today, he started to talk about the, the cities that rejected his mighty works and they didn't repent. So they rejected his mighty works because they couldn't repent or they didn't want to repent. And then he said, Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida, for, for if it's a mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Um, these two cities, this, they are in the west of Chorazin and Bethsaida, they are in the western side of the Galilee. So this is part of the, the way how he preached and performed many miracles. The other two cities of Tyre and Sidon, these are not in Palestine or in the um, Jewish area or region, but they are from the Mediterranean Sea this area. So they are Gentiles. So basically he's trying to say, um, because you have rejected these mighty works and you didn't repent, your situation will be more worse on the judgment day than Tyre and Sidon. And he said about the Capernaum, okay, and because he's, he started, he's from Galilee, and this is part of his um, area or his city, he said, who are, who are exalted to heaven will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would be remained until this day. 
So he's trying to make a comparison between Capernaum and Sodom. Why both of them? Sodom rejected an angel of the Lord to repent. But Capernaum rejected the Lord himself. And that's why the situation between Sodom and much more oh, tolerable than, than Capernaum because they rejected the Lord himself. That's why he said, but I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and the day of judgment than for you. And the reason here, because the Sodom rejected the angel of the Lord or the messenger of the Lord, but um, Capernaum rejected the Lord himself. And you can see how it is very hard to see um, um, that a city can reject the Lord himself. For this part, the church, through an inspiration of the Holy Spirit, put a Psalm 146, he, who says, who excuses justice for the oppressed, who gives the food to the hungry, the Lord gives the freedom to the prisoners, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord raises those who are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous. And to confirm, or the church is witnessing for the Messiah, or witnessing for him, he is the Lord, he is the Lord God. So the church now witnessing that he is the Lord God, but in the past, they didn't witness for him, and they rejected him. And if you look at a rejection, there are many people now that do reject the Lord. A lot of people now, they don't accept his words. They might admire his words, and they might admire his mighty works, but when it comes to the faith, they don't believe in him and they reject him. There are many people in this world, they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as the Lord, as the Savior, as the Redeemer. And even they have seen his mighty works, they have heard his words, but still they don't believe him. And that's how it is important for us that we listen to his words and we do believe in him. The faith is really important in our spiritual life that if we have a personal relationship with God, faith is really important. But do not expect when you have faith in God that everything will go and run smoothly. No. Why? Because we live in this world, and this world is changeable. Upside down, every day was a different condition, a different state. One day is peaceful, the other day is not. One day is quiet, the other day is noisy. Um, one day there is no, um, uh, nothing, no events at all. The, the following day, many events. One day, no surprises. The following day will be more surprises. So the world is changeable, and that's why we cannot give any kind of security to the world because we are not from this world. But living with the Lord and having faith with the Lord makes us not to stop the temptations or the trials or the tribulations of the world, but to be able to overcome them. As if like, you know, he puts all these trials and tribulations underneath our feet. And once we do that, we feel we are in control, we are on top of it, rather than we are drowning in it. And how, you know, we have this because the Lord, he said, in the world you have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Those people that on this city, <clears throat> they actually missed out in many things. Missed out of knowing the Lord himself. How sweet he is, and how loving he is. They have missed out being really sinful, and going to him, and once you repent, you will feel how God is so kind to me and accepted me the way how I am, and he will give me freedom. And that's why he said, the Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. And they don't see how those people, they have faced some kind of oppression in their lives, but God will execute justice for them. How lovely he is. And you don't... Uh, 
if someone is really hungry and he doesn't have anything to eat, to drink, God will provide him from anywhere by his own way to feed him. And most importantly, that he will feed us his body and blood and will make us full and satisfied spiritually. And at the same time, if I feel like I'm blind and I can't I can see God or I can see the truth, that he will open my eyes to be able to see the truth or to know the truth and at the same time to see him personally. He will reveal himself to me in many ways. What a great joy for them. And also, those people, they fell down and they feel humbled and humiliated. God will raise those people. Will, will arise those people up for the sake of their falling down, for the sake of their humility, for the sake of their humiliation. And, the, and God will make you feel loved. And that's why the, the Lord loves the righteous. So they are missing out a lot of things. And I don't know why they rejected him. There is no other explanation except the ego inside themselves. They wanted to live differently, not according to God's law or word. And rejecting him in many aspects, it gives them a different type of freedom, a different type of food, a different type um, of justice, a different type of truth, and they will see things completely different. So people are so confused in this world simply because they rejected the Lord. Once I have received Christ in my heart and I have accepted him, he will change me completely. I'll tell you, when St. Paul has met Christ, he was so different from the disciples. The disciples went with the Lord in a journey through his mission. They have seen his miracles, they have seen his word, have heard his words, he has, they have seen the, how he interacted, the Lord interacted with many people, and they can see the difference. And then they went through he, with him through his pain and suffering during the Passion Week. Some of them um, escaped, some of them stayed, but all of them they have seen, all of them they have heard, all of them they went through that battle, and then they have seen him during his resurrection. St. Paul was different. St. Paul didn't follow all his ways. He didn't follow Christ. He didn't hear his words. He didn't, he didn't, okay, maybe he has heard about it. Maybe he who was around, but he didn't experience him as the most of the disciples. But after the resurrection, Christ appeared to St. Paul. On, on the spot, he changed him. On the spot, accepting Christ when he was also asking about who he is, accepting him inside made him to change completely. Now, before he went to Damascus, he wanted to persecute the Christians and kill them. And then after that, he changed completely. He started to accept him in his heart. And once he has done that, he became a different person. He can see differently, he can think differently, he can act differently, he can behave differently. And this has happened all through the resurrection of the Lord. So now we have to accept the resurrection of our Lord and to have him in our lives. And to believe and trusting him that he can do a lot of things for me. So those cities missed out a lot. And there are many people here in this world, they are missing out, knowing Christ. That's why when we have accepting him in our lives, this is how we are be going to be changed. So what is the point now, and every year we say these words. So I expect that I can have a change every year. The times that I couldn't forgive, now I can forgive. 
the times that I cannot accept things from the Lord might be harsh or difficult, I can accept it now. Maybe God has allowed a tribulation to me. I have to thank the Lord for it with great humility. If I have sinned and I fell down, God will raise me. And I have faith in that. With all of these things, I can feel God's love. So at the end, when I hear this gospel, I'll never be scared. I'll never say, oh, this is the wrath of God. How come that he threatened like these cities because they didn't believe in him? He's trying to tell them, you have missed out a lot of blessings that I have given you and others. And I'm quite sure some of them, they have believed in him, if they have seen him or they have heard him, but they didn't exp experience him fully. It is our golden opportunity now to experience him and his resurrection in our lives. And this is a personal um, relationship between you and God, and it is a beauty in itself when I feel that God is fulfilling all my desires. He has satisfied me. And, and the answer to that question, how come there are many people now, they live in deserts, they have for, uh, left this world, and they live in a cell by themselves all their lives, and they are happy and joyful. Can you answer that? People, they think the joy in the world, but those people, they think, my cell, my place, my cave, my monastery, this is my joy, and this is my resting place. So we need to seek him personally, and he will have rest. And this is what actually St. Moses the Black said. It. it was the most beautiful quote. He said, go to God by yourself, and you will have rest. So let us, all of us, walk and go to him, and you will have the joy and the rest in him and the peace that we, the world is lacking these days, and to enjoy with being with the Lord and Christ. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.